I think the world is in good hands with these scientists. I mean, everybody keeps exactly the six minutes he was given. I mean, what perfect. That's the first time I'd ever experienced that. All right, let's see. The, our last welcome speech comes from the Wissenschaftsplattform, the Future Earth Research for Global Sustainability. And please welcome from India, Paul Srivastava. Herzlich willkommen. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the dangers of being the sixth welcome speaker is that you've already heard all the welcomes, but welcome once again to this inaugural uh, year of the global understanding. I think uh, uh, this should be an inaugural decade and an inaugural century because global understanding is not something that we need only this year. We are going to need it for a very long time. And if you want to think about centuries, then we need to think about where human history is coming from in terms of century and where we want to take it as a generation. And I'll come to that in a second, but I want to thank Benno Verlin for being a one-man United Nations. He has pulled together so many different countries, so many different disciplines into pulling this thing together. So I want to thank him for organizing it and for inviting me here. Thank you, Benno. <clears throat> So I want to begin also by acknowledging Jenna. I did not realize till uh, Professor Rosenthal mentioned that this is the birthplace of both ecology and sustainability. So I'm really delighted that we are in the midst of a community that produced people who were thinking 300 years ago about these very important questions. Now clearly in the 300 years, both those terms have changed a lot. And that change is now bringing us to a very different place in history. So I just want to take a few minutes to set the context of this welcome. The first I want to say that we are in the period of Anthropocene where nature and ecology are not changing by their own internal dynamics, but by the activities of humans. So it's almost impossible to think about nature as something independent of humans. We are living in nature, human integrated systems in which we are the dominant force. We've been the dominant force at least for the last 50 to 60 years. And if you look at any major social trend, any major ecological trend, whether it is population, GDP, water usage, uh, carbon in the atmosphere, all of them are basically showing the same hockey stick curve. And from 1750 to about 1950, they're sort of rising very slowly, almost horizontal, and then suddenly after 1950, they all start moving up in an exponential way, and all in the wrong direction. And all of it despite the best efforts of science. On the other hand, on the one hand, we have produced enormous amounts of knowledge, enormous amounts of science and technology that allows us as middle class people to live better than kings lived 300 years ago. But on the other hand, virtually every indicator of ecosystems is getting worse. And we are now at a point that some people call planetary boundaries. And we are breaching these planetary boundaries. We are breaching the cycles of nitrogen and, and phosphorus and, and the biochemical balance that has remained for millions of years and is the source of our sustenance. And we cannot continue to do this without changing the way we behave, which is what the, the focus of IYGU is, but we also need a different type of understanding. We need what I think Future Earth represents, a science 2.0, a science that is focused on solving problems, a science that is transdisciplinary, and reflective enough to escape its own trap, which is the disciplinary boundaries that science sets on itself. I mentioned earlier today that there are 8,400 disciplines. We are so fragmented at a time when we need to understand the world holistically. We need to understand the world in historical terms and in terms of the future. So this fragmentation does not help. 
Future Earth was created by organizations of the, first, the, the previous two speakers, ICSU, IISSC, uh, the World Council on Business Development, uh, the Belmont Forum, and a number of UNESCO, Un United Nations University, and many other international organizations to help create a different kind of science that was responsive to society's needs. We have 23 scientific projects in the areas of biodiversity, oceans, uh, and social sciences, transformations to sustainability. And we have in a network about 60,000 scientists with a global footprint across the world. We have five offices in Stockholm, Paris, Tokyo, Boulder, and Montreal, and four regional centers in Cyprus, England, uh, Uruguay, and uh, uh, Kyoto. And we are putting in three new offices in uh, Africa this year and one in South Asia. The purpose of this global distribution is to promote a global understanding, is to do science in collaboration with, as Martin said, a co-designed science, science that is done with stakeholders with the explicit purpose of solving the major challenge of sustainability that face us all. I think at this point there is no excuse, there is no place to hide, and there is no time. We don't have another century in front of us if we continue to do business as usual. And we don't believe that this is a problem of science alone, that universities alone can solve this. I think we need to bring in all of society. We need to bring in the cities, we need to bring in the politics, we need to bring in corporations, businesses, civil society, into a collaborative approach to doing science that meets the need of tomorrow. So in order to celebrate that and launch the, globe, the year of global understanding, I'm delighted to welcome you to this, and I hope that this welcome also is a kind of invitation for all of you to participate and collaborate with scientists in your own communities to bring about local solutions. Thank you very much.